Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the world of mole calculations number five. We're going to have a look at percentage yield today. Uh, what on earth is a percentage yield? Well, it turns out that almost all the time when you do a chemical reaction, uh, you actually don't use up all of your reactants. Uh, this can be for a number of reasons. The most obvious ones that you will know about include equilibrium, uh, forming byproducts instead. Uh, remember, byproducts can be sold as little extra profits. Um, let's have a look at how to calculate percentage yield today, though. Um, so percentage yield is relatively easy to work out at first glance. It's how much you actually made. That's mass. So what weight of your product did you actually make over the amount that you theoretically made? Times 100, of course, to turn it into percent. Um, I'll do two examples. One is your classic one and one is slightly twisted. Um, so uh, that, that's how you actually do it. This, this actually made is just a mass. So it will be stated, as my pens invade my space, sorry. This um, will be usually stated in the question, unless, of course, they're asking you to calculate it. But it will just say a chemist produced, you know, 65 grams of product. This one here, so usually stated in question or calculated, uh, this one here can be a wee bit trickier. Uh, in fact, it is trickier because this, you have to work out. So this is calculated um, from the balanced equation based on the mass of your reactant you started with. So it's calculated from the balanced equation. You know the drill here. It's the mole ratio, of course. So mole ratio based upon uh, the mass of your reactant that you started with. Let me show you an example of that. Okay, let me try and zoom in. In fact, oh, over enthusiastic zoom. There we go. Um, right, guys. So this is uh, an SQA question, um, and it's saying here it's following on from something else. But don't worry about that. Uh, so in this experiment, soap was being made by heating triolein obtained from olive oil with sodium hydroxide solution. So don't worry about that. Again, don't let the weird names put you off. Don't even let the horrendous formula put you off. It's basically a, a chemical. It's even give, they've given you the GFM. 884, blimey. Um, and you're making the soap, which is the sodium salt. Uh, and they've also given you the GFM of the salt. Excellent. Not going to talk about that because that's part of my Fats and Oils videos. Go and watch that. We're interested in this one here. 5 grams of triolein produced 1.2 grams of soap. Calculate the percentage yield. Wonderful. So, uh, percentage yield equals actual over theory times 100. Now, this is, we're solving for that, so we'll need to know this and we'll need to know this. Um, if you have a look at that for a second, it says 1.28 grams of your soap. That is your product. So, yeah, boom. We know how much we actually made. Now, at first, it's tempting to put that on the bottom line, but if you read the question, 5 grams of triolein, that is a mass of a reactant. So that's no problem. Let's go ahead and calculate uh, how much we theoretically should have made. Now, 884, uh, the mole ratio first, by the way, it's 1 to 1. Oh, sorry, it's 1 to 3. Ah, ha, ha, nearly caught me out there. 1 to 3. Excellent, that's why we RTFQ. Uh, read the flipping question. So um, one mole of this makes three moles of this. So that means eight hundred. Let's turn that into. I'm going to do the. I'm going to do the. My proportion calculation first, and then I'll show you how to do it in moles. If you prefer to turn everything into moles. So basically, eight hundred and eighty-four grams. I need a better pen. Should make three moles of this. So we need three times that, which will be nine hundred and twelve grams, according to my mental arithmetic. So 884 grams would make 912 grams. We don't have 884 grams. I wonder how much we actually have. Because, of course, we're going to put uh, an X here because that will be the mass of soap we should have made. So that's our theoretical mass here. We just need the number here, which, of course, is 5 grams because this is the triolean column. It's one of the reasons I like this proportion style because it tends to keep your numbers in clearer order. Uh, if you have seen my previous videos on this, you'll know that I'm a big fan of cross-multiplication. That times that 
equals that times that. So if we say 884x equals, uh, I've gone off short, time to zoom out. There we go. 884x equals 912 times 5. Therefore, x equals 912 times 5 over 884. Let me just work that one out for you. And according to my calculator, x equals 5.158. Let's not do any rounding yet. Uh, 5.158. Now, um, some people freak out. They'll try and give you kilograms here um, and kilograms here. And that's no problem. You can just put kilograms straight into here and this will come out in kilograms. Let me just spare the, you the psychological torture of the rest of that bell there. So this is all in grams, so this is in grams as well. And that is my theoretical mass that I should have made. Is there any way to do a quick... Uh, no, no, sorry, uh, scratch that. Let's, let's push ahead with this. Actually, no, no, I'm not going to push ahead with this. I'm going to reveal to you one of my secret errors, which is I often have sausage fingers on calculators. So I often do what's called a sanity check, um, just to see that the answer I got is approximately correct. If you have a look at these two numbers here, guys, this number here is very slightly larger than this number here, which means the number we get here should also be very slightly larger than here. And oh, look, it is. Whereas if I got something like 51 or 0 0.51, I might want to not blindly trust the calculator because my fingers have made a mistake. Go back and check it again. So let's push ahead with this percentage yield calculation. We know that we know the actual, we now know the theory. Let's do it. Um, 1.28 is how much we actually made. We're still in short. Yes, we are. Divided by 5.1, oops, 5.8 times 100. Let's see what that is. Once again, I like to do a little sanity check in my head and make sure I'm not making a mistake with my sausage fingers. 1 over 5 is about 20%-ish. And when we have a look at the calculator, 24.8. Wonderful. 24.8%. That's my final percentage yield. Um, and we're done with this one, anyway. We're not done with this one at all, hey? You said you were going to do the moles method. No problemo. Let's do the moles method for those of us who prefer moles. Can we do moles in blue? Um, what I would have done is this remains exactly the same, the actual, because it's just a mass. It's 1.28 grams of soap. It doesn't change. The theory, let's go back to 1 to 3 ratio here, guys. So what I'll do now is I'll work out how many moles of triolein we actually started with. I'll work out how many moles of soap we would have made from that, and then I'll turn that into a mass, and it will come out to be precisely the same as this, of course. It's just some people like moles. Some people like juggling geese. Right, so, um, where would I go from here? I would say moles of reactant equals the mass of reactant, which is 5, divided by the GFM, which is 884. Is that still in shot? Yes, it is gives us that number of moles of reactant. To turn it into the moles of product, we have to look at the mole ratio, which is 1 to 3. So multiply this by 3. It's still on my calculator, so I'll just cheat and multiply it by 3. Um, that gives us, uh, and I'm rounding on the page, but I'm not actually rounding in the calculator answer. 16968. Uh, That's moles of product. Now, we don't want moles, we want mass. Um, so we multiply by the GFM, which is 304. Gives us, shockingly enough, precisely the same mass. So if you like doing moles, you mole away. If you like doing proportion, then knock yourself out. It's both good. Let's do the second example. This is a more interesting one, because they have given you the percentage yield. Um... And they're actually asking you something else. And this seems to be more common, probably because it's slightly trickier. Let's have a look at this. This is introductory waffle. Skip all that. Cut straight to the question, actually. Calculate the mass of phenol. Now, where is phenol here? Phenol is there, so that is your product. So they want the mass of your product actually made. So we're solving now for the top line. So we need to know the percentage yield, and we'll need to know the bottom line, which is the theoretical yield. And as I said, if you're paying attention, less than 10 minutes ago, I said we calculate the theoretical yield. They have told us the percentage yield is 90%. In other words, 0 0.9. So that's our percentage yield. So we're saying that 
percentage yield equals actual over theory. This time we're solving for actual, so we need percentage yield times theory. So that's grand. We're halfway there already. 0 0.9 is percentage yield. Um, let's have a look at how to work out uh, how much we should have made theoretically. There is, well, there's your reactant, benzene, and there is the data to do with benzene, 117 kilograms of benzene. So that's how much we reacted. Um, but that's not how much we should have made. To do that, we need to look at the mole ratio here. Now, the mole ratio here is 1 to 1. Nice and easy. So I'm going to do proportion uh, first over here because I like it and I'm lazy. So it's 1 mole to 1 mole, which is even gives you the GFMs, 78 grams. Now, at this point... You're probably shouting, wait, wait, you can't do grams, it's in kilograms. That is very true. So you can do a maths dodge and just say, that's fine. 78 kilograms would have produced 94 kilograms. All you're doing is multiplying both by a 1,000. Still works. Trust me. We didn't have 78 kilograms of benzene. We had, I actually should have done this underneath these two columns. I apologize. So this is your benzene column. This is your phenol column, just so you don't get lost. So one mole, one mole, 78 kilograms makes 94 kilograms. We had 117 kilograms of benzene, so we'll put 117 kilograms in the benzene column, and we'll put X in the phenol column, because that's your product, that's going to be a mass, and that's the theoretical mass you should have made. This is what we're working out. So cross multiply, uh, X times 78 equals 117 times 94, Therefore, x equals 117 times 94 over 78. Let me just get that for you. As I said in my last video, I do like to do a quick check in my head. 78, 94, you know, this is a chunk bigger than this, so we should be getting something bigger than 117. And the answer is 141. But it's still sensibly larger. It's not like 1,000 kilograms or anything like that. It's just a quick mental check. That's your bottom. That's your theoretical uh, mass. Wonderful. Now we can go ahead and work out uh, the actual mass, which is theory 141 times percentage yield, which is 0.9. So therefore, my actual equals 0 0.9 times. Are we still in shop? Yes, we are. That's the quote of today, it would seem. So in other words, you want 9 tenths of 141. And the answer we finally get is 126.9. Do we need a unit for this? My famous question. Let's go back and RTFQ. Calculate the mass in kilograms. No, we actually don't. So I'm just going to leave it alone. That's my final mass there, guys. 126.9 kilograms. Let's do moles over here in purple. For those of us that like moles. What would I do? Um, the moles is actually considerably more complicated here, in my opinion, because you're going to be dealing with awkward numbers. But let's go with it, if you're a mole person. Um, we would have turned the mass of benzene into a number of moles. So 117 kilograms, this is where you've actually got to turn it into grams because the gram formula mass is there. So it's going to be 117,000 divided by 78. That's going to give us the moles of benzene, which comes out to 1,500 moles. And because the mole ratio is 1 to 1 here, you'll also have 1,500 moles of phenol. All you need now is the mass of the phenol. So we'll take the 1500, multiply by the GFM, gives us 141,000. But again, you've got to be careful because that's grams. Uh, this is one of the reasons I like proportion more, but I'm just whinging. Don't worry, pay no attention to me. That's going to be 141 kilograms, which of course is exactly what we got for our theoretical mass on this side. Then you just plug uh, 141 times 0.9 and you're going to get the same answer. Hopefully that was useful to you guys. Um, consider subscribing please if it was. Uh, that way if I polish up or fix any of my past errors you'll be notified of it. Um, there's a couple more videos to come. Uh, just one more maybe, polishing off mole calculations. There's a few oddball calculations that I might squeeze into one video, but they're all actually a piece of Battenberg cake, or whichever cake you prefer, of course. Other cakes are available. Thanks for listening, folks. Bye-bye.